with Tony and you watch. <laughs> Not to do a voice drop, but in my in my radio, radio voice. Nice. A thousand watts. Tony Watts. We are here back live on Triumphant TV. Um, I have the amazing and talented, and you will see shortly, Muhammad Ayers. Uh, he is. Listen, I'm gonna let fam. We we had a lot of. A lot going on before we popped in a minute late because we 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 have an impassioned discussion. Let the people know who you yeah, are right. so we can do this thing, man, and get it popping off. Oh wow, thank you, brother. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ayers, also known as Muhammad Ahmed Ibn Abdul Hadi Ayers, also known as Mr. Ayers on TikTok, the Hey Baby Guy. Um, singer, songwriter, actor, producer. Credits include two-time Grammy nominee, mainly with Robert Glasper. Black Radio 2 until um, recently with uh, the Ethical Feelings album. Um, 2021 Oscar shortlisted songwriter with Rob Glasper for the documentary Mr. Soul. Um, Tyler Perry's Hell Have No Fear Like a Woman's Scorn starred in that. And um, Broadway for a little while. And um, World Traveler, uh, Child of God, a Lover of Life and the Arts. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's me in a nutshell. Background vocalist for um, Justin Bieber, Neil, Music Soul Child for a while, and then once I got into songwriting full time, that's been me. Yeah, yeah. Don't you, you gave don't give it too much, man, because you know then then you know they celebrating just a little bit. So just we're gonna oh, give them a, we'll give them a little bit at a time. So what I do normally do, I have two questions I ask everybody. So I'm gonna ask you my first of those two questions. The mm -hmm. first question is right. If there was one thing that you can change about the entire world right now, one thing, what would that one thing be? That evil no longer rule it. That evil no longer rule it. I like that. That's the only thing that needs to change yeah. is that people who were in high places are not inherently evil. Nice, I like that. Mm. All right. so. So the people can get to know you from, from, from ground level with the foundation, everything started. Where did you, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in a place called St. Mary Parish, Louisiana, um, particularly a place called Bayou Sally Road. We so country, we had to have a Franklin address and we ain't even in Franklin. We, so <laughs> All right? we are literally on a frontage road next to the, one of the busiest highways in the world, Highway 9. Uh, wow. Good old country boy. Yes, sir. Just a good old boy. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. All right, we're, we're gonna get into that too, huh? Nah, man, nah. I, I throw that in. Never <laughs> mean no. I'm from the I'm from the country, so you're supposed to know something. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, I, was never, I was never a country, boy, a country lover. Um, but if you keep singing like that, man, you might you might be able to direct me in some in, in, in the right. No, 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 no. I'm gonna tell you what, and that's when the dudes that has it. But I'm gonna tell you. Um, I learned to love country when I was working offshore as an ROV pilot because um, I was one of the best co-pilots, if not the best that we had in the ROV field. And the pilot that we had in the seat, he listened to what they call Yacht Rock, the Kenny Loggins, and uh, Michael McDonald stuff, and then he listened to Queen, and then he listened to country. And I got to start to love the storytelling as a songwriter. And then when I discovered Ray Charles, for real, for real, right. I loved it more. And now Chris Stapleton is like my dude. You need to okay. listen to him. What, what's the what's the cast name? Chris Stapleton Chris. has a song by the name of uh, Tennessee Whiskey. Oh yeah, whoa, whoa, that Tennessee Tennessee Whoa, whoa, yeah, man, that's a song, man. That's a song right there. Uh, yeah, man. He, he yeah, I, I've, I've heard that one. That that cat really kills that song. Absolutely, Yo, I'm a fan of that. Get his album. Get his album. He's a dope okay. writer and a dope singer. Cool, cool. Um, how many siblings do you have, if you have any? I have, all together, there's, uh, I have seven siblings. Seven uh, siblings. Yeah, I have uh, four sisters and three brothers. All right, so um, I'm gonna put you on the spot, you know. Don't, 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 tell them not to be mad at you if, you, if they watch it. Um, <laughs> one word to describe each of them, individuals. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, we'll start from, from my sister Mar, um, Queen. 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 Um, my sister Sajida, Warrior. 
um, my brother Rodney. Um, hmm. Intellect. Um, my brother Jamal, Savant. Um, my sister Jamila, um, rest in peace. Um, God. Um, my brother Scott. Um, weird. <laughs> my sister Angela and my father. Every time you hear a, a horn blow with the train, that's my father. Rest in peace, Pastor. I'm okay. sure you hear. But my sister Angela, um, unknown. I've never met her. Never oh, met her. okay. No. And uh, yeah, that, I think that covers it. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, seven. That's there it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I thought that would be fun. I never thought of that one before. <laughs> ah, you had to pull that on me, right? Yeah, I thought, hey, I'm sorry, yeah. man. It's, I told you I'm learning how to do this thing. Um, right. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, 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 no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> um, talk to me about your childhood. Oh, man. Well, first of all, uh, you have to understand living in, in St. Mary Parish is it's a whole different trip, man. Um, beautiful country, beautiful place. Um, my father and my mother, you, you couldn't have asked for um, a better childhood. Um, just it was a, a childhood full of love, full of music. We we're in a house where literally from the moment that we woke up to go to school to the time that we went to sleep, we got home. It was still music. Uh, my father was a singer, my mother a uh, songwriter. And, um, you know, it was, it was just a house full of love. We were in our own little world because my mother and my father, I talked with her, uh, my mother told me recently, she was like, we were determined intent to raise y'all closed off a little bit from what was going on outside of this house and this yard because it was just a whole lot of other stuff, if you know what I mean? And, you know, it, it, we were protected, we were loved. Um, really just, it, it was a freer time, you know? Like they say, um, I think it's the Toys R Us that said where a kid can be a kid. Right. Uh, yeah, in, in my household, we were we were allowed to be kids and my, my parents were always real with it. We grew up Muslim um, at first yeah. um, with the name, they can give it away. And, yeah. you know, it was, it was about prayers, uh, of course, um, family prayer. And we grew up mostly vegetarian. You know, I didn't start eating meat until after I left out that house. Um, we would, my mother, my father would read to us, you know, all the time. Um, I think my mother read the book Roots like twice to us before. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, you know, and, and it was just, my father was always real with us. And, and my mother was, was, was just, you want to talk about a queen who just is the ultimate example of just power um tenacity genius um love i mean that's my mother but but we were just exposed to so many am amazing things my father being from ohio he bought you know all of what he knew and what was there down to the louisiana and my mother being so down home i mean the best cooking you ever ate in your life mm. I, sound like, I sound like the lord um, ardemore as i call him <laughs> some of the best cooking you've ever had guess it was yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you can't admit the one who shall not be named, but right. that's pretty much what it was, is that um, it was love, man. It was love and it was light and it was life. Nice, 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 good stuff. Um, take it each parent, right? One thing that you learn from each parent, just that one thing that always sticks out, like, wow. Mm. My father, I learned how to, how to be a man, how to stand up as a man, to stand up in your stuff, you know, okay. to, to, you know, face your, your demons and to deal with it. You know, right. my father, he had to fight off a lot of demons to become the man that he eventually became. And okay. um, I witnessed it in real time. And my mother, she taught me about, I know it's two things, but I'll run it into one. She taught me about faith and resilience. Faith and resilience, nice. That's, her, that's that, that woman. That's a heck of a combination, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that woman is as resilient as they come. She's she's got her faith is is just next level. I mean, her name literally means Edna stands for the restorer, restoration, right. and that woman literally can take anything and 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 bring it back to life. Yeah, nice, nice. So just just listening to you speak. So your father. Um, 
had a restorer with him. So when he was going through his building stages, he had somebody that, you know, stand by him and help him help him navigate that situation. Come on, that's what we call it. It's a preach the gospel. Yeah. Preach yeah, the gospel. Man. Um, preaching better than they shout. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to stay right there for a minute because, you know, uh, the society that we live in now, um, mm -hmm. we, 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 we don't understand the, uh, the marriage, right? That it's, it's now, it seems like when you get on my nerves, I'm, I'm, I'm going to check out. I'm going to cancel. You know, you don't, you don't, you're not doing what I need you to do. You're not the same person I used to be. You know, mm -hmm. you've got too many problems for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check out. And, and mm -hmm. when, I, when I'm hearing that your mother and your father did, did they was like, all right, you be who you are. I be who I am. But we keep building regardless of, you know, how how, how, how the knuckles get scraped up. You know, your knees get scraped up. We're going to keep going and, and, yeah. and, and build this legacy for these kids. Yeah, yeah. But understand something. Um, and I say this for any of the ladies who are watching. My mother didn't, my mother didn't take nothing off my dad. And truly, she says it all the same time. She says, I raised uh, all you kids and I raised your daddy too. Wow. You know, because, and literally, and this is being candid, my father had a problem. He didn't have a, a bad problem with alcohol, but every now and again, when he got real down in the dumps, he, he drank and it got kind of tough sometimes. And my mother literally kicked him out the house and was like, no, you are not coming back here until you go and get it together. And he Thanks. and he was very open about it. He went to the bridge house. He went and he put himself in therapy and because he knew that the only way he was going to get his wife and his kids back is if he got it together. So she wait, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Cause because we think therapy is a new thing, right? We think it's a new thing because oh, we because no. we've grown up with the stigma that you know black people don't do therapy, right? Uh, man, um, come on. I try to let people know it's not that we went to the white person and not to say we're going to white person is a bad thing, but our therapy was in our churches. Our therapy was, 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 was in our homes. Grandma and grandpa was kind of the therapist and, and, and the aunts and uh, older aunts and uncles had that Maybe. therapy for you. They, they pull you aside and go, dude, you're not doing right. Or ma'am, you're not doing right. Like, let's talk about it. You had a place yeah. to, to share and, and let go. So, mm -hmm. Um, I really like the fact that, you know, you brought up, you know, that your pops put himself in a situation where he could get the help that he needed so he can come yeah. back to his family, right? You know, that's yeah. powerful. That's strong. She, she wouldn't like, allow it. I mean, my mother, I say this all the time. I'm like, you know, um, you are only, you only take what you allow. Right. And my mother knew, like, you know, that, look, I don't, I don't need this. You know, I don't deserve this. Right. And the thing is, is that my father knew that, okay, well, she bad. So if I don't get it together, then I'm gone. So he right. got it together. And I tell Queens all the time, like, look, y'all, y'all control it. Y'all have the power. You are the power supply. You are God. So yeah. the only way that Adam can get in the gate is if you, if he comes in straight. Right. You know, but well, right. that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, yeah man, she, she was the catalyst. Conversation, right. Yeah, she was the catalyst for him. Okay, good. Good. She counts she count for all you because she, she definitely made a strong impact on you with the faith and resilience thing. You know what I mean? That's, that's something that, you know, that's something people need to stand up on. And, 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 it's, and it's powerful. I tell people this as, as well. It's powerful when you have somebody in your corner, regardless if you're good or bad, you have somebody in your corner. Like they can shake their finger at you that you're messing up, but you know yeah. they still love you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that, so it's, it's not like I'm talking down to you. I'm talking mm -hmm. to a point where you need to do better and I can't continue supporting you doing what you're doing now. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm, right. I'm the queen is the counterpart, right. right? The king is the counterpart. Like if I can't talk to you, then who can I talk to? And I think that the problem is we have so much pain between us as a community. We have really been weaponized against each other. <clears throat> Come on. Oh. Our women are being taught and I, and I, this is transparency. Our women are being taught to, or at least society is trying to teach them to sell themselves. And by the way, your man can't afford you. Right. And you, man, you need to, you ain't got no bootstraps, but you need to figure it out. But until you end up getting to this level, the queen don't want you. Right. So I'm going to step in and I'm going to take her and I'm going to give you what I don't want. And then we can figure it out. And it's like, we've been weaponized against each, yep. against each other. Our greatest strength is our unity. Yep. You know? Cool. Let's go. But that's another conversation. That's another <laughs> conversation. All right. All right. Because <laughs> we could we could be here forever. Um, let's uh, let's talk about high school. Oh man, high school was was a different trip for me, man. We we transferred. Um, 
we were going to a school um, named Centerville High School. I was there until the fourth grade. And then when Franklin Senior High School and all the Franklin opened up, my mother and my father, my mother especially, was determined. Because Centerville, I mean, you, you're talking about Louisiana in the 80s where there was a lot of covert and overt racism, still to this day, but really back then, especially in the schools. And I mean, it got to the point where literally, this is no joke, my sister, um, Jamila, she qualified for, you know, a scholarship award and she was the best person in the class. And there was another Caucasian girl who was like behind her in points. Don't you know that they ended up flipping a coin for that thing and wow. they gave it to the Caucasian girl? Wow. And my mother knew that she's like, no, nah. she's like, I'm not gonna have my children go through this. So she was like, if I gotta make sure that y'all go to Franklin, that's what I do. So I'm being a little open. There. So we ended up, you know, busing my mother, not busing, my mother had to drove us and every morning to Franklin to wow. y'all going to school up here. And they tried to tell my mother that, no, you can't do that. My mother was like, no, you're not going to tell me what to do. And when we got to Franklin, my world opened up, man. They had a music department, nice. they had an acting department. And that's where I really was able to connect with, you know, who I was, man. Uh, we were we were like the outsiders that were welcomed into a, a huge family. And like I say all the time, you know, St. Mary, Centerville, my mother and my father raised me, but but Franklin, you know, they really raised me. I like okay. I really came up there. It was beautiful, man. I loved it. Nice. So you got your black school, like over two thousand students. It was it was amazing. Okay. Nice. So you got your you got your grounding, your footing in a situation. So we, we can go to the Joseph uh reference and go with, with with the devil made for evil, God made for good. Oh man, come on, man, come on! It, it, some of the some of the, yes, some of the biggest turning points in my life have happened through that type of stuff, man. I, I dare say that I am in the middle of that type of uh, situation now. Okay, you know? yeah. You want to get into that now? Or you want to wait down, down the road? We can get to it later. All right, cool. I'm cool. sure you won't forget it. I know you got a process of how you you taking it through the steps. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm right. I'm writing this down, so I won't forget. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 That's that's important. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So college and college experience and you know. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I was in Southern U University for three years. I marched in Southern yeah. University band. I was a trombone player and the band nice. singer. Okay. Uh, I ended up singing at the Bayou Classic two years, and we whooped up on Grambling both of them years. My my crab name was Reasons. Sing that song for the youngest that don't understand what you sing. Craving your body is a spill. Temperatures rising, I don't want to feel. I'm in the wrong place to be real. Just don't write them like that no more, son. <laughs> no. Hey, man, you know I got my entire life when I watched the... Um, the verses between them and Earth, Wind and & Fire. And, and I forgot to mention, I wrote eight songs on Ron Isley's last solo album. Wow. Before yet. But still, okay. um, yeah, man, I got the chance to, I enjoyed that from a different perspective and view, man. But it was, it's, that's life music. My daddy and my mama, my daddy told me, <laughs> and this is not, I'm not, I'm not, this is not graphic, but my daddy told me, seriously, when I was listening to the Isley Brothers one day, I think it was living for the love of you. I said, Daddy, I love this song, man. I feel like I'd heard it all my life. He said, well, yeah, you wrote in it. You wrote in it. <laughs> I'm like, huh? He's like, yeah, you wrote in it. He said, we had that beautiful ballads album. Woo! You play the thing night and day. I'm like, ah, come on, man. <laughs> no, Dad, no. I told Ron Ozzy that, man, because I was like, because yeah. we got the demos. I, I, I sang just like him. And okay. um, I was like, yo, man, I, I wrote into life with you. Oh, uh, man, that's my daddy told me. My mom was like, yeah, we should. Wow. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, okay, let's, let's give me uh, one male figure, one female figure that has made a major impact in your life that's not a relative. Mm, that's easy. Um, male figure, my um, brother by the name of Ricky Armelin, who um, was a very good friend of my father's, but he actually at one time, was my algebra teacher and uh, he ended up becoming our principal. Um, and female, I have to say Miss Diane Wilts. Um, and I'll tell you the reasons why. Uh, Mr. Armelin, I thought because he was a friend of my father's that I could just kick back and do whatever right. in his class. And he was like, nah, brother, you gotta, you gotta get it together. I will fail you, I do not care. Like this is about you having your stuff together. 
And also whenever we were going through a situation, he was from the, he was from the street like us. You know, right. he was very open about that. He was very candid, but he was the most God-fearing, loving person that I've met since my father. And he was real, he was transparent and he, he connected with us. And when we were going through a crisis at our, at our school where the school board literally was trying to torpedo our school with, with bad principles, um, we walked out of school. We were like, we, we had a whole protest. We came to school that morning and we walked out and he came and he got all of us, corralled us in and he said, what did we want? And we said, we want you to be our principal. From that day forward, he, he, he became our principal and eventually superintendent of the schools. He cared about us that much where he was like, I don't care if they fire me. He said, y'all want me to be your principal? If I'm not y'all principal, I'm gone. And they promoted, wow. and everything was beautiful. Miss Diane Wilkes, because she is the one person that saw my talent as an actor and really she nurtured it. She really, she was a person you have to understand, and I only understood this later, my, my acting teacher in school, he was real antagonistic towards me. And wow. I, yeah, he, it's almost like he didn't want me to act there. And uh, I never understood why. Come to find out later on, I found out from my mother that he had bought my grandmother's car before she had passed away. So there was maybe a spiritual linkage there, you know, in Louisiana, okay. that spiritual thing. Right, but he was right, real antagonistic right. towards me for no reason. And right when I was about to quit and just be like, man, I don't want to do this no more. She grabbed me and she shook me and she she really set my face. To quote Bishop Jakes, he was like, he, uh, talking about Jesus and the crucifixion. He said, he set his face to Jerusalem. Well, she set my face to my 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 passion and my career and it okay. changed, me. changed me. Nice, nice. That's yeah. solid. Good two people, good two people. So um, since we're talking about, you know, male uh, teachers, um, mm -hmm. I think that we need a whole lot more. Um, how many male teachers did you have? How many male teachers did I have? Yeah. Literally, through my, through my whole life or just in high school? Uh, high school, uh, high school, let's go just through high school. High school, I had three. Wow. Okay. I had three, yeah, and they were all brothers. Well, with the exception for, of Mr. White, but ironically, but uh, he was my Spanish <laughs> teacher and uh, he was really, Senior, as we called them, but uh, so I guess yeah, it was four. All together, it was four. Four. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Cool. Um, who introduced you to music? Oh man, that's my life. I I, I am music, man. I mean, <laughs> Did you just get the story? I just I rolled into life. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> God, that's my life, man. I'm like, yo, that's that's. Has been me since I came in this world, man. I mean, I, my, my father, though, my mother taught me about the, the love of, of song writing, song craft, because her husband and her, and her dreams is Sam Cooke. And of course, he's a master storyteller and she and Motown, she just loved that. But my father really taught me about the depth of music, about jazz was his bass. Um, that's my bass too, um, classical. Um, you know, the yacht rock, as they say, um, everything, man. He, he, he loved everything. And he, he had this album collection that was just, it was amazing. And he would listen to music day and night. Like he, he really filled our lives with music. He's the one who taught, and both of them really. All right, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a detour from a question for a second. Um, mm -hmm. how, did, how did your dad pass, if you don't mind? Uh, he combination of uh, renal failure and kidney failure, and, okay. and truthfully, he would have still been alive had he had not been in a in a better facility. I, okay. I will go to my grave with that. Um, and and but the, also at the same time, to be honest with you, he had he had put himself through a lot, and he was ready to go. Right. So right. I, I'm not going to get into it, but he he was literally ready to go because it, it was amazing that he had lasted as long as he did with all he had been through. All right. How, how old was he when he when he passed? Sixty nine. He's sixty nine. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Young sixty nine, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the very first song that grabbed your attention. The very first song that grabbed my attention. Yeah. Well, that depends. I think, the, I think the first song that really changed my life as far as like, I, I felt like I had found this holy grail of, of just amazing dopeness. Yep. Looking in my mirror, 
Woo! Took me by surprise. I can't help but see you running often through my mind. Help us like a baby. Sensual disguise. And I'm so glad I found you. Yeah. You're an angel in disguise. Can't help it if I wanted to. Can't help it even if I could. Can't help it if I wanted to. Can't help it, no. I cut it out before we have to put your cash app in the thing so people start saying. Uh, uh, Mr. Aaron 13, <laughs> man. Mr. Aaron 13. I've got my hands. Howdy, <laughs> sir. I yes, sir. Money. Yes, sir. No, so, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you about to say? No, 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 I'm saying that that was it for me. I heard that, and when I found out Stevie Wonder had produced it, um, well, well, you know what? No, that was the song that really caught my attention. But uh, if I must change the, the the question in a way, the song that decimated me, like just completely changed my entire life forever, um, a song for you, Madonna Hathaway. Woo! Listen, I'm going to pause right there. I've told my daughter, um, she's 17, she can sing. That's the song you sing at my funeral. I've been so many places in my life and time. Yes. So lot of songs in the midst of that. I've acted out my life in stages. 10,000 people watching. We're alone now. And I'm saying the song to you, yeah. Man, man. Yes, sir. And the work was right there. After that. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one right there, yo. Mm. That is the one. Oh my gosh. Donnie Leon oh. Russell. Leon Russell, the 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 pick from Nashville wrote that. Have you heard the original wow. version? No. Now I've been so many places in my life and time. That's how you say it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, like okay. he's, he's a country boy. He's a white boy with long hair and country, but he, he wrote that song. He was a hell of a writer. Yeah, he wrote that song. Yeah, who yes, he wrote, he wrote that song. Whoa. Yes, he did. Oh, my gosh. I'm glad Donnie brought it to me, though. Donnie um, Hathaway was a country and Western fanatic. Really? Oh, yeah. There's an interview of him at the end of one of his albums, These Songs for You. Look it up um, on Apple Music. On the very end of that whole album, he talks about how music is to him and how he's working on some symphonies and getting all the education. And he'd said, well, I'm a country and Western freak because of the songwriting. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm learning some stuff now. Like you, you kind of, you kind of edging me over to the countryside. I might go take a peek, like a real peek. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've really, um, I, I guess it's the, something with the sound. I, I just, I'm just not in love with it, right? But when you say the writing, I, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm a lyricist. I love lyrics. So if I jump in and I hear some real lyrics, like the the song you told me to, um, the cat you told me to to, to uh, the album, that that yeah. when, I, when I first heard that, I was like, oh my god, like who, like what is this? Like it's so much soul and life in there. I was like, oh my gosh, Tennessee whiskey. Like I was like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a man uh, stuff, man. Come yeah. On. Yeah, That's some singing some man stuff, man. Come on, that is tight. Yeah. Um, so what was his first song you ever wrote? Hold up, I gotta address what you said. It's something about country I don't like. I think I know why because it's usually it's a soundtrack for uh, for oppression. <laughs> That's why <laughs> it's a soundtrack of the wrong side of our lives. That's all. Yeah. Oh, listen to some country, some Conway. It's a fun nigga. It could, it could be. It could be. That could be it. <laughs> um, and and I think I think when I was younger, um, I, I worked in a uh, a supermarket um, in, in mm -hmm. East Chester, and they used to play that 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 song they called the blues. Um, what's that dude with the glasses? Hank Williams. No, nah, no, nah, he's with the glasses. Uh, uh, and they call it the blues. Um, you know, him and the girl yeah, rolled into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "You having fun, dude? You rolling in the sheets with this chick? Like, how? How is this the what?" And you know that sound and, and country kind of sounded the same to me, so it all just turned me off. <laughs> like, you guys are having too much fun with this thing right now. Like, this, well, you know, well, you know, what's the hurt. 
You know what they say about a country song when you play it backwards, right? No. Your, wife comes, your wife comes back home, your truck gets fixed, and your, your dog <laughs> starts whining. Your dog starts, starts whining. <laughs> you, are teach, you are teaching me today, young man. Come on, man. You are teaching Come on, me man. today. Um, again, what was the first song you ever wrote? First song I ever wrote? Yes. Wow. Well, there was a song when I was a kid that my if my sister Mara watches this, she'll know it was it was called Dad Tick Tick B. And that's all it was. Dad Tick Tick B. Dad Tick Tick, Tick B. Tick, 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 B. <laughs> like I don't know what it was, but my first official song uh was a song called She Wants to Give It to Me. Oh. It was okay. horrible. It wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't, it wasn't that good, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Um so did you write the song for somebody? No, um, I, was, I, I wrote it trying to really, it was, it was, I never thought of myself as a songwriter. I, I was a more of a poet as a writer before I was a songwriter because I just never thought that I could. I had this thing in my mind, but um, that was the one time that just because of the track and, and that's, I tell people this all the time. If you were to look at my discography, like there's a song called You're My Everything that I wrote on um, Black Radio 2, Rob Blast's album featuring Jasmine Sullivan and Bilal. And oh, wow. everybody listens to the lyrics and they think, you must have been in love when you wrote that. And I'm like, no, I write the best love songs when I'm single. And I write the best single songs when I'm in a relationship. Wow. Okay. Okay. That, that's, that's, yeah, that is crazy. That, that is interesting. Because I was going to go back to the, uh, to the Michael Jackson song that uh, mm -hmm. grabbed your attention and ask who was it? you know, during that particular time that, you know, the lyrics and everything matched up to the situation, but hearing, hearing that part of the story. <laughs> well, here's the thing, I was, I was a kid at the time. There was nobody. Okay. And uh, nobody. Um, I was probably like around five or six and I, I would just listen. My father had these huge speakers, Florida, you know, here. And right. I would just pull up next to him and listen to him. And it was, it was the colors. Like I'm, I'm sinis I have synesthesia. I, I'm, I don't know if anybody else does, but you know that's when you hear sounds and color. Like, and for me, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And I tell people that about Kanye West. Mm. When Kanye West first came out. Um, mm -hmm. MTV did a did a, did a um, did a did a interview with him, like chronicles of his little life and how he came about. And he had a picture on the wall with uh, with with colors going across the lake. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful pictures of colors going across the lake. Like he had mm -hmm. like big discs going across the lake. And the mm -hmm. lady was like, what is that? She said, it was a song I was trying to do, but I couldn't do the song until I could see the colors. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he's, he's, he's gone. He's genius. Genius, man. That's genius. genius. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, here's the thing. You when, when like, like whenever I hear can't help it, as soon as it starts, that's that's a dark purple that transitions into a dark red. And okay. then when it comes to the often through my mind, it goes from that red and it, and it climbs up into like a light blue and then it comes right back down to that deep red. Nice. From a red to like almost like can't help it. That's red. Can't help it. That's like uncertain. So that's almost like, um, I, I keep seeing like almost a dark blue, almost like it wants to go to like almost a, a, a purplish kind of color. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. That's nice. what got me, the colors, the colors, the chords. It was just, oh, the orchestration. Ugh. Nice. Quincy Jones, man. So, so, <clears throat> so we, I, I, gotta, I gotta poke my dude in here then, but you haven't brought him up yet. Prince. Who? Prince. Who? If Francis Kenny Man got a name, by chance his girlfriend came across a needle and so she did the same. Oh man, I, lo I love Prince to me. My favorite song by him is um, I'm just a crazy fool, lost in the world of love. I just am crazy. You. Two minutes and 11 seconds. I, I tell people, um, anybody who really knows me knows that that is probably my top three favorite Prince songs. Get out of here, man. Come absolutely. on. A absolutely. Absolutely. Don't nobody I'm, mention I, that. I, I'm a Prince fan, son. Uh, She's always in my hair. 
Come on, yo. Come on. Never I feel like giving up. Hey, say that stuff. Whenever my sunshine uh, turn to rain. What you say, Press? Whenever my hopes and dreams are aimed in the wrong direction, she's always there. Uh, tell me how much she cares. She's always in my head. She's always in my head. My head. Uh, say that. Maybe I'll marry her. Not me, I'll marry her. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Not. No, 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 no. You can bet no, I was I my ride. Maybe not the ride. I got to have your face on that line, please. Yes, oh, yes, 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 son. Yes. Oh, man, I'll be squizzy, James. No, man, I'm sorry. He's, he's a genius. Yes. He genius. Absolute genius. Absolute genius. He killed him. Mm -hmm. And I was I was introduced to him in in the middle of you know really deep in the hip hop at the time, and I happened to go to this party. I was in high school. And it was a week, it was a party that lasted a weekend, mm -hmm. and the dude that was there he all he he's like yo you never heard of Prince? I was like yo because Prince's covers and all that. I was like I ain't messing with that dude. He's like no nah, no nah, you need to listen to him y'all listen. And he started playing the joints and he's like yo listen right here when this particular song and that song. Um, he played uh, Erotic City. He said, mm -hmm. he, he said, listen to listen to the, the upticks. And every time mm -hmm. the chorus comes with the upticks. And I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, because I, I really like music. And he was showing mm -hmm. me the things behind the music and how and how the um how the bass went, how, how the chords went. And I was like, yo, his band must be dope. He said, no, 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 he did all this by himself. I was like, what? And then I found that he sung, he sung all seven octaves. I was mm -hmm. done. I was over. I was over. That's you know right. what? Here's a, here's a fun fact for you about Prince. I'm sure you know this, but you know that they originally wanted Maurice White to produce his first album. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. he said no, and I'm so glad that he did. Right. But you know, you sound just like my dad, because my dad, he was like saying the same thing. Oh, man, Prince, man, I ain't with that. And then, you know, because like, he old school. But right. what changed his life, because my sister Jamila was a big Prince fan, when he heard Diamonds and Pearls, he was Woo! like that. He's like, he's a genius. That was just <laughs> I was like, yeah. you said you don't like Prince. He's like, yeah, but you know, he, he, he be doing weird stuff. It ain't no big deal, man. Like, right, on. right, right. As long yeah. as he keep making his music, we gonna talk, we gonna, we gonna listen to him. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to him. He, he, from then, he fell, like, he fell in love with Prince. Have you seen that video? I'm sure you have, as a Prince fan. Tell me you've seen it. Prince, Michael Jackson, and James Brown. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, my sir. God. Yes, sir. Anybody Anybody who's watching right now, go to YouTube when you're done watching this and, and type in Prince, Michael Jackson, and James Brown. Now, sure. I'm going to tell you something. Michael Jackson was petty. <laughs> he was petty. <laughs> he was petty Murphy for that, man. He was petty yeah. Murphy for that. Yeah. Oh, my God. I ain't going to give it away, y'all. Just watch it. You, you will get your life if you are a Prince fan. You, and it, he said himself, he was like, I have never been on drugs before in my life. And I almost thought that he was because I saw how he was, but then you realize, no, that's just how Prince was. Right, exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. just how he was, he was absolutely. He was absolutely. amazing. First time you touched the stage to perform. Woo. First time that I touched the stage to perform, oh God. I was, it was at some, I forget what it was for. I think it was a style show, because you know, black folk, we always have a style show, hair and style show. Right, right. And right. I was lip syncing Word Up by Cameo. <laughs> you movement. When you get the call, you got to get it on your way to your tennis. Like I was like a heavy, heavy lip sync because the other guy wouldn't do it. So I was like, I'll do it. So yeah, it was the first time I touched the stage as far as like lips. I, I was lip syncing and everything, but the first time that I touched the stage to sing, yeah, it was uh, hmm. if I'm not mistaken. I believe that it was for, hmm. It was in, it was when I was at LaGrange Elementary and they had this uh, talent show. No, 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 that's not it. Junior high, when I was in junior mm -hmm. high, they had, they had um, a talent show and when everybody knew that I could sing and um, they told me that I should enter and I was shy, but then I said, yeah, I'll enter. And I did. And and there was no sing? pride for the talent show, but I did get in. That was the first time I got the bug. What'd you say? 
I believe it was Tevin Campbell. Tell me what you want me to do. My love is always here for you. Oh, oh. Y'all gonna give Tevin his, his flowers, man. Yeah, yeah no, was... absolutely. He was, he was a bad boy. He was oh, a bad boy. Yeah, oh, he was God. a bad boy. He opened up the door. Like y'all, they talk about Usher, Usher, Usher. And I'm like, y'all forget yeah. about Seven Seven Seven. Like that I'm ready album right. changed the game. Like for and he crawled so y'all could walk. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Tevin was Tevin back in the day was he, was, he did some stuff. He oh saved some songs. Yeah, he saved yeah, he some did. songs. He did, man. Five top artists right now off the top of your head. Five all time. Just right now, five the oh. first five artists that come to the top of your head. We mentioned a few of them. Uh, Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Babyface, uh, Donny Hathaway, and yeah, who's the fifth one? That, that's that's a tough one. But you actually you actually did five. You did Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney, Babyface, and uh, and Donny. Oh yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. That's, yeah. that's my one. That's my one. That's it. That's day one. Oh, and Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano. Let me tell you something about. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what about um? Let's 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 detour to talk about Whitney. I hope you realize today is what you mean to. She was a. She's probably the the greatest vocal influence on me. Period. Okay. Period. When I when I I heard the voice of God, her and Donny Hathaway are the two. But when I heard her sing, it, it it was it was the voice of God. Like I was like, I want to sing like her because I grew up singing with my sisters all my life, and they were the only right. ones that sing besides me. My brothers don't sing. And um, when I heard that voice, I think the first big song. Um, I found out what I've been missing always on the road. I've been looking for someone. Man, she she was just so sweet and so conversational and so easy. Right. You know, it was it was so effortless to her. I was like, if I can't sing as easily and as powerfully as her, then I ain't got a voice. And right. You want to go? Yeah. I, I, I get uh, apprehensive and a little upset when I hear people go, "Well, I'm going to sing this song from Whitney Houston." I was like, "You better not," because I might. Like, Throw your egg at you, so ah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't, don't leave that alone. Like, hey, yeah. leave, leave the real singers alone. Don't do that. No, nah, no, nah. like it's like Nas told Jay Z and Ether, why don't you let the late great veteran live? Right, For real right. man. Like, no, 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 you don't. If you can't do Whitney, don't do Whitney. Don't and we you know if you can do Whitney because you've done Whitney successfully before, right. Right. That's how I feel about. It. I'm very protective of her, man. She she's the standard. There is no greater voice, uh, female or otherwise, in my mind. Besides wow. Her. Uh, that's oh, oh, but, but then again, no, because Aretha Franklin. And mm. I forgot to mention her. She's got to be number six. But yeah, Whitney Houston and, and and Aretha are my two females that just. Then there's Patti LaBelle, and then there's Glass. Yeah, gl- come on. Woo. Come on, that's that, that's that right. soul. Oh, That's that straight from the soul. Oh man, oh, you man. felt you felt every single lyric. Like, oh, why, why he doing like that? <laughs> hey, but you know what? Here's, here's the thing about it, though. That was a time, and I know it's coming back a little bit because people are talking about Silk Sonic right now, and I love the song. Be the dog, Although, in a way, you talk to a lot of the real heads that are from back in the day. They're like, oh, they can't stand them because it's a carbon copy of a lot of the stuff. And don't get me started on Bruno because I love Bruno, but at the same right. time, I understand why Bruno is doing what he's doing uh, because of the label that he's with. He's with Atlantic, my former label, but the, he's bringing it back and um, somebody has to. And right. I love the fact that chord changes, musicality, instrumentation, lyrics, you know, but back in the day, the lyrics, take for instance, on Smooth Sailing, Angela Wimbush wrote this. Every single heartache will be kissed and love away. Mm. At my desire's height, the body will obey. Lay your hands on me, girl. Touch my burning sand. Let your waters cool me. Your wish is my command. Like, like 
Who writes that? Yeah. Who writes no. that? Nobody now. Yeah, <laughs> nobody right now. No, well, yeah, no, no, no. That's a lie. I am, and you go here. Okay, that yeah. okay that's 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 different. That's different. Yeah, that's but no, nah, it's different. But no, nah, nobody's doing it like that. It, it's but then again, you gotta think though, that was an age where you had to know how to play, you had to know how to sing, you had to know how to write because the competition was so fierce. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nowadays, you just have a bunch of, of mumble rappers and high schoolers that write everything. <laughs> and it sounds like it. That's why her is, is so dope because yeah, she, she plays instruments and writes herself. She's, she's, she's very amazing. impressive. She's I very love her. Man. She's amazing. Yeah. Very no, impressive. The cream, the cream rises, man. The cream rises. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if you listen for it. I'm going to turn it back on you. I know that you're doing the interview, but you, top five artists, go. Top five artists, Prince, mm. um, Donnie. Yes. Uh, wow. Maxwell. Um, uh, oh, it's difficult. Um, D'Angelo. Cause I like that that that, oh. that smooth art, you know that that soulful music. Um, number five, like wow, who would number five be off the top of my head right now? Having your way. Oh no. Um, you want to table it? Huh? I said you want to table it. I know you got somebody. Yeah, I'll table. I'll table. Somebody popping. All right, we'll pop in. All right, we'll somebody in. Pop in. Yeah, because uh, this, they, they, and I was thinking while we was talking, there's a couple of new artists that I, I kind of like. Um, there's a, there's a yeah. song that I, I was like, oh, you're a liar because there's there's a, there's a song that I like. Um, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it, I think it's on the uh, on the um, on the photography soundtrack. Photographer. The photograph. Yeah, the photograph, are, right. Are you talking about Lucky Day? Huh? You talking about Lucky Day? With the song Fade Away? How the song go? I just want this feeling to last. Oh, no, that's not, that's okay, not. I got the I got it right here. You know Rob it actually I'll, 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 I'll find it. And it's a um it, there's a uh there's also a song on the um the what's the I'm drawing a blank right now. The movie uh, when it's like a Bonnie and Clyde, the black girl, the black guy, they they're on the Queen run. Slim. Queen is slim, right? There's it's a, a joint on there too. That's that's oh, oh. really lyrically just 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 killing them lyrically. Okay, just, hold on. That, see, that, see. That, that that old you know uh, the lyrics are just there you know falling in love talking talk talking that really ah. pertinent impressive stuff. It ain't, oh. It's not all over the place. It's not disgusting. It's not, not listening. Going, yo, what are you talking about, dude? Okay, I've added it. I have added it to my library. It's you got Megan Thee Stallion. I know you don't mean that. You got Soul Sister remix by Lyle and Raphael Sadiq. You got Tina Major and Nine Collide. Tell me something. Collide, Collide, yes, Collide. Oh my gosh, Collide. <laughs> Oh yeah 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 that you know, hopefully they come come up, and I can I can uh, point you to them. That um, they're young, but they're psh, killing, 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 killing the game, killing. And them. you know who I love nowadays? I, I, I've always loved her. God, I want in my dreams, I wanted to marry this woman, Jasmine Sullivan. Listen, people don't understand what that chick's voice is like, man. Like like <laughs> she she's an angel. Like her voice is. And, and she's got that old, old soul kind of kind of rhythm to her, and, it, and it's it's just amazing the way she does it. Um, some people were talking about talking about her the other day. When was I at? I was I was somewhere, and they were talking about Jazz and Sull Sullivan, and and um, oh, uh, this conversation. Um, one of my one of my partners has. Uh, he's a uh, therapist, and he has a session on Saturdays where he gets a bunch of therapists and um, psychologists together and have real talk about certain um, situations and, and to, to, to help everybody work through 
you know, when they have their clients and stuff like that. So it's a, it's yeah. a real tough conversation. They were talking about Jasmine Sullivan, how she sings in a particular song that she wrote and um, how the lyrics were kind of out there. And they were talking about the lyrics, but we got into talking about her as a writer and her as a singer and how I was like, she's amazing. Like she's, 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 she's amazing. One of the honors of my life was to have her sing something that I wrote, man. Trust, she, she's, I hope I get to work with her in a, in a singing and writing fashion one day. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put that in the universe and speak that into existence. So, so, so when that happens, make sure you take the picture and you send it to me, like click it, you know, and tell, uh, uh, I told you, yeah. I told you. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna rub it in your face. I'm gonna send it right in the inbox. Be like, ah, yes, but, but but being that we're on uh, young ladies that can sing, we 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 are missing some. Ooh. Probably one of the biggest vocalists right now. Oh, hold on, hold on. One of the biggest vocal vocalists right now. Singers. Her, she got big voice. She got she got. Yeah, that, yes, man. Come on, don't don't turn Jennifer your. Jennifer Hudson is a phenomenal singer, but here's the problem. Nobody knows how to write for her because they keep on trying to push her into hollering all the time. And she's got right. such a smooth, lower tone that's like, just let her work there and give her somewhere to go. Right. Don't start a, ah, like, no, we know she can right. do that. Right. She's right. So, she got so many levels and layers and depth. And, and you know, man, I, I pray I get to write for her. Because, man, yeah, she, she's got an instrument. She, she, thank you. It, it, that's what we've been missing to say all night. She has an instrument. Yes, because sir. people don't understand, people, and you'll understand this, the voice is the, is the fifth instrument. Yes, sir. It's the no, fifth no, no, instrument. No, 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 I'm gonna correct you, sir. The voice okay. is the first instrument. In the beginning, there was the word. The voice is the first instrument. In okay, the cool. The word. Cool, 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 every cool. instrument that's come afterward, except for the drums, has mimicked the voice. But I'm with you. It's the fifth instrument too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, let me give me a second. Um, let's jump into this. Uh, what album would be the soundtrack to your life right now? What album would be the soundtrack of my life right now? Yeah, if, if you can't say an album, then give me four artists and uh, put, 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 a, put a song from each of them. No, 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 no. no. I ain't, I ain't got to do that. Album of my life right now, um, Victory Lap, Nipsey Hussle. Oh, wow. Okay. Victory Lap. I, I, Nipsey, let me tell you something. I've never had a celebrity that affect me so much that I didn't discover. I, I, I discovered him before his death, but when I was in California, I was privileged enough, and I hate to say it like that, to, to I went to his funeral, but it was because of the effect of who he was as a person and what he yeah. did for his community and what, just how deep he was. And I discovered, you know, so many dope books and so, so much, I discovered crypto and blockchain and discovered, you know, you know, so many different things because of him. But that album itself, when you listen to it, I mean, understand, you take your victory lap after you've won your race. Right, exactly. And for me, it's a soundtrack of my life because I am in search of my victory lap. I have not, I have not had the opportunity to take mine yet. And when I listen to him, it inspires me to, to push harder so that I can know that feeling, you know, prolific, so gifted. I'm the type that's gonna go get it. No kidding. Like his whole, his whole everything was about, he knew who he was, he knew what he was about. He knew what he contributed. And he was, and he was fierce. He was a king, and and he literally was was the spook who sat by the door. That's why he said, you know, um, uh, find me out in different places. Spook by the door, just an infiltration. Double back, dressed in blue laces. Like wow. he was like wow. Tupac of my generation. Like you know, that's he literally followed the Pac blueprint. But that's the album. That's the album soundtrack of my life right now. All right, cool. Um, let's uh, stay in this this vein. Um, gospel singers. Woo! Well, you know, there is the consummate. If I can just make it up there. No, you know that. Millions <laughs> didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Marvin Winans in the Winans period. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fred Hammond. Um, yes, yes. Fred is one of the best. 
uh, Rance Allen. Um, I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Y'all know real Rance. Maybe sunshine, then again, it just might rain. Right. I know that I'm gonna make it after all. Um, one of the greatest gospel singers ever. Um, one of my favorite gospel songs right now, period, is Ty Tribbett's um, He Turned It. Um, and I, I need to listen to that. I ain't heard it in a while. Um, Vanessa Bell Armstrong. Woo. Her, her verse on um, Choose Ye This Day. You can feel it falling inside. How will you ignore? There is nowhere that you can hide. You've been running for so very long, but why not give in while the feeling's strong? Oh, 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 oh. choose ye to stay on you, will sir. Will it be God or me? Now the choice is yours. Hit it. You must choose ye this day on you, will sir. But I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Like so underrated. So yes. underrated. Yes. So did underrated. You, did you see the um I'm trying to find her, but did you see the uh the wow I'm really drawing a blank today? Um Clark Sisters? Clark Sisters, right. Did you see that? I did you, not. I did not. I was I wasn't here. I was out of the country when it when it uh, right. So th there's a there's a lead singer in there. Um, I believe her name is Michelle. Please look her up. I know who you're talking about. Please look her up. Okay. Okay. Please, man, listen, man, that voice on her. Whoo. I don't. Oh. I don't know why she's. I, I don't know why she's not a mega star. I, I don't. I don't know why. I can tell you why. Because the industry. Yeah. The industry, man. Yeah. Don't, get me, don't get me started on that. But you know what? You cannot mention gospel. You cannot mention gospel without mentioning the late, great Daryl Coley. Ooh. Can't yeah. do it. And I met him, I met him uh, before he passed, years before. Oh, don't forget John P.T. Don't forget Smokey Norfolk. Don't forget Yolanda Adams. Don't forget, um, <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Anybody from the Whitfield clan, that, 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 that <coughs> commission period, I mean, you can go through uh, you know, any of them and you could say the Clark sisters, of course, um, good God. That to me that that's that's probably my tops that I just mentioned. Um, okay, but yeah, man, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so let us know about your uh, your label experience. How many labels are you on? Uh, that the, the, that whole road, what it looked like. I was signed with Atlantic Records in 2010 after I won a contest from, uh, put on by the late great Andre Harrell, um, rest in peace, superstar soul search. Uh, I won that. And um, I was signed to Atlantic in 2010. I was dropped subsequently in 2011 after I was shelved. Um, I didn't enjoy that experience at all because I thought that I was, I won that contest and I was being presented as the next. and Come to find out, I was basically um, a pawn to get another group um, pushed to the forefront that didn't even compete. Um, I won't. Wow. I don't even want to mention. I won't mention their names, but um, well, okay. no, it's it's, it's 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 known. But their name was Hamilton Park, and you know they had a fifty-song demo that was done already. And I basically we went in the contest. Wow. Uh, Atlantic didn't do anything with me. I had to go in the studio, record this stuff, write this stuff. I had to mix it. I had to master it. They didn't give me no budget. And when they brought me into the, the studios or into their offices um, to be presented, he was trying to present me as the Black Robin Thicke. And I'm like, he's not even a white bee. Like, what you talking about? Like, you know, <laughs> serious. Like, that's, that's what it was. He wanted me like, do you play piano? Can you dress like this? And I like, yeah, play a little bit of piano. Like, I, I got thrown under the bus. And they basically told me, they went down the line after they listened to my album and they were like, the two heads, Julie Greenwald and Mike Kaiser walked out of, the, of, of it when they were playing my stuff. And then Greg Kalman was the last one in the room. And he basically, after they played my music, he went down the line and he was like, we got Tank, we got Music Soul Child, 
we got a few people. He just went down the line. He's like, we don't need any more R&B singers, but you can go to wow. Warner Brothers. Eric Benet is over there. They might know what to wow. do with you. And wow. after they told me that, I had to sit outside of the offices and hear them gush on the phone to the producer of Hamilton Park about how they were going to be the next Jodeci and all of this stuff. And I literally wow. had to wait in those offices being being pushed to the side like that. I had to wait there for six hours for my flight to leave. And nobody, everybody ignored me. They treated me like I was a redheaded stepchild. And after I wow. left that day, I was still signed to Atlantic and I wasn't even allowed in the front door without Dre's permission. I'm like, I'm signed to wow. Atlantic. How long, how long were you? Hmm? How long were you? How long were you? Uh, how long was your contract? How long were you attached to him before you know? Well, you came there out for and do a year. Yeah. They, they shelved me. Like it, my my contract. No, no, I'm saying. Like, 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 huh? Yeah, you said your contract. You said your contract. What? Well, no, no, my contract. I was there from 2010 to 2011, and their whole thing was the stipulation of if you don't pick up your option by 11:59 p.m. on December 31st, 2010. I mean, uh, 2011. Okay. He's like, then right. you're done. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. they shelved me. They they never had I didn't really have a contract term. They they were like, if we don't pick you up, then if you don't decide to pick up your option, then you're done. Okay. They never had any, any intention to really do anything with me, you know. And later on I found out why. Um okay. and it was basically because it was like, yo, they had 50 songs on the demo ready to go. None of them were hits, none of them were good music, but because he was just given his situation with Atlantic. He had to produce something and put it out, and fifty yeah. songs was better right. than ten. Right. And they went with them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. With them. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. Okay. Um. What What was your mental state going through that? Distraught. Yeah. I um. Because you got to. After that happened, my my father passed away in two thousand twelve. Wow. And it was it was his dream. It was his dream to do something in the music industry. You know, he was a singer and um, he had gotten um, his tonsils removed. And when they did, they had scraped his vocal cords because it was a very archaic practice back then. Right. And he, he could still sing, but he just, to him, he couldn't sing the same way he used to. Right. And he had always had that dream to do it. And when that won that contest, I, I, was, I was like, this is it and we're gonna do this. And he was so proud, but then, he treated me like absolute crap. And I felt like the biggest failure in the world because right. I didn't get the chance to, my father didn't get the chance to see his, the dream fulfilled through me. And I felt yeah. like I let him down so bad. I felt like the world's biggest loser. I, I, to be thrown away and thrown to the dogs like that and to have come that close. But everybody knows all those other cows. I forgot to mention her, Brandy. Woo! The vocal Bible. But yeah, man, the, 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 vocal, the, the vocal Bible is what they call her. The vocal Bible. Yes, sir. The vocal Bible. Can you please sell me on her because I, I, I had a debate with somebody about about her. Mm -hmm. um, I think she, I haven't heard a song yet, but to me, she kind of stays in a range. Like she, does. she doesn't she doesn't really give her voice all that it possibly can. And I don't know if it's fear or just she's comfortable where she's at. So I was like, I was giving them people that I thought sung better than her or oh, had yeah. more control of the voice than she did. You know, mm -hmm. and they were like, no, she's the best vocalist. And I was like, no, she's not, I she's not the best vocalist, not at all. <laughs> I said, she can sing, yes, but best vocalist, no. No, 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 I would not say that. What I okay. will say is, is that she, she was, what she does with her voice is that she knows, like you said, she knows how to work the hell out of that range. Right, right. And when you see her, her live, she basically does her better than anybody else can do her. And that might sound redundant. You, you, you hit your mute button. All right, come back with that. She does her better than Ebos can do her. And then you hit the mute button. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much it. She, she, she does her better than anybody else can do what she does. And her songs, she had great songwriting, so she was allowed to really be able to work within the confines of it in a way that so many other people couldn't do. She, she kind of like opened up what it was to be a young 90s pop star for Black women. And, and I, I love I loved what she does with that. But yeah, she, 
I personally believe that after that era of her Never Say Never, Never Rodney Jerkins stuff, after that album, she was never the same. And she hasn't had really any songwriters, producers that know what to do with her. Okay. You know? What would you do? I'll work with her. I'll work with her one day. What would you do with her? Like, what would you, what would you write for her? You know what? I let the artist determine what it is that I'd write for. I, I, I'm like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, where they were talking about their time and they got with Janet and they just hung out with her. And she was asking, like, okay, when are we going to write the songs? And they're like, we're writing the songs now. You know, like, oh, so everything we talked about is what we're going to write? And they're like, yeah, we're going to write that. Like, I let the artist define what it is that they want. But then again, that's the problem with the industry right now is that so much of it before COVID has been done via email. And you're usually getting a whole lot of tracks from producers that they just made before, no artist in mind, just whatever. And then when an artist is looking for something, they'll send you the tracks and say, find something for her. And then you write what you think that she would want. And okay. I don't like that practice. I, I like being able to work. I've never had the luxury of getting in the studio with any artist except for Layla Hathaway and Lettucey. And um, yeah, she's another one I forgot. How, how could I forget Lettucey? Oh my God! Kind of just, you just just slid it in there. You hit your uh, what's going button again. Yeah, you just kind of slid that in there like like she doesn't exist. <laughs> oh no, no! Well, you know why that is? Because she's not on pop culture consciousness, and right. and right. because of the fact that she's been put in urban AC land, and we okay. know that that's a graveyard when it comes down to popular music with our people. You're listening to smooth sounds, uh, and it's like no. <laughs> <laughs> The Quiet Storm. It's like, no, right. man, let us see. She got some dope stuff, man. I wrote a song on her last album, uh, The Wild Card, Now or Never. I wrote that song. Nice, nice, and, okay. And on the, on the Apollo soundtrack, I wrote the song Don't Turn Back Now as well. All right, so so let's let's do that. Let's let's take a, take a break for a second and, and let's talk about who you've written for. Oh, well, um, I wrote for Tamar Braxton. There's a song of hers called Free Falling that I wrote. I wrote eight songs for Ron Isley on his This Song Is For You album. Uh -huh. I wrote, um, again, for Robert Glasper, um, primarily for the past uh, few years. On the Black Radio 2 album, I wrote You Own Me featuring Faith Evans. Excuse me, again, I wrote You're My Everything featuring Jasmine Sullivan and Bilal. I wrote on his F Your Feelings album, I wrote uh, Endangered Black Woman by Andre Day. Um, work with a lot of females, as you can see. Um, there's a song that's dropping soon, Shameless Plug, but and nobody really knows it yet. But there's a cut called Queen that Luke James has already covered. That's gonna be his that's gonna be his first number one. That's his my my my. Trust me. Nice. Uh, nice. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a killer. Um and that's the only one. And Layla Hathaway for the Mr. Soul soundtrack I did. And again, I, I mentioned Let Us See for her album and for that soundtrack. And uh I believe that that's it. Nice, nice. It's a good, uh, good catalog there. Good little okay. catalog you got going on. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's jump into the project. Since you uh, brought up Mr. Soul a couple of times, let's jump into the project. How'd you, how'd you get involved? You know, how, how, how'd that whole thing work out? It's going to sound like a, a crazy story, but it's all facts. Um, I literally was, because I do art as well, um, I had drawn a picture of uh, Kendrick Lamar as Black Panther because he had had the Black Panther album Right. Um, that, yeah, that was so phenomenal dope. album. Phenomenal album. Yeah. Oh my God. One of the greatest concept albums that still does not get the credit that it deserves. Right. Phenomenal album. At very. And I sent that picture to Rob just because I don't know why. And then he ended up calling me, which he never really does, unless it's important. And he was like, yo, he's like, this is how the spirit works. He's like, what are you doing on this day? And I was like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of far out. He's like, yo, I'm working on this project called Mr. Soul. And, um, they're in need, I'm going to score it. He's like, I'm going to do a closing credit song. I'm not sure who's going to sing it yet, but he's like, I want you to write it. And I'm going to need you to come up here, come and do it. Oh. So it was, and he wasn't thinking about me. It was literally because I sent that Black Panther pick that he was like, yo, that's just how the spirit works. Because I was just thinking about who could I get to write this song? And then. Wow. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the time work. That's exactly how it worked. Um, yeah. So, so tell us about the, the, the whole Mr. Soul project. What is it? What does it look like? One of the greatest documentaries that you've probably never seen, unless you've seen it. Um, it's about this guy by the name of Ellis Hazlip. Now, I didn't know any of this existed until this documentary, but you know, I'm sure you probably heard of him in some way. 
Um, no, I didn't, in, about, I didn't know about it until your sister told me about it and told me about you, and then I jumped cool. in. <laughs> okay, well, cool. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, back in 1968 to 1972, there was a program called Soul with the exclamation mark. Pre-Soul Train, which was a copycat, literally, of the show, and not a good one at that. And Ellis Hazlip is the guy who he worked for Channel 13, ironically, my favorite number. And he, at that time, uh, there was pretty much on television, there was nothing that was depicting us as so-called Black people in a favorable light. Usually we were on the news and we were the plight of America. And he was like, no, there's a Black arts movement that's going on here in New York and all around this country, but particularly here. You got to think the late 60s, 70s, what the Black arts movement was in New York and Harlem and Broadway. Yep. Yep. So he was like, I want to create a space for us to basically be our most beautiful, phenomenal selves. And literally everybody who was anybody, think of everybody who was anybody, musically, as actors, as politicians and activists, they hit that stage. Matter of fact, there's an there's a, there's a interview of a young uh, Louis Farrakhan in a tan suit when he was like, and maybe I think it's maybe his late 20s, sitting down there talking with Ellis Hayeslip about uh, the nation of Islam at that time. Uh, and people didn't know that that's what that was from. But he basically pioneered, you know, us on television. And it was all live. Nothing was pre-recorded. Nice. Everything Good. was live. Yeah. And, and like I said, it was us. And it was, this was on PBS. Right. This, this was literally on PBS, but it was the, some of the most phenomenal, most controversial. I mean, from the last poets uh, with, uh, to Amari Baraka to... I mean, you you name anybody that you can possibly name, they hit that stage. And it was such a, a deterrent. The Nixon administration, they literally torpedoed the show uh, wow. because they thought, yeah, because they were like, it was too positive. It was too positive for the black community. And his, his niece, Melissa Hazlip, phenomenal director, a um, good friend of mine now, she, ended, she directed that documentary and it's about him and his life and about that show. And um, it was, it, when you watch it, and they actually have 24 episodes of Soul on Amazon uh, Prime now that you can okay. watch. And um, you, ha you have to watch it. Yeah, you'll, no, you'll absolutely. Watch it, you'll watch it and you'll be like, this is the greatest thing that I've never seen. Right. Like seriously. And, and yeah, the song that we did for it um, was a song called Where Is Your Soul featuring Layla Hathaway. Um, and it is probably one of my favorite things that I ever wrote. And that's uh, what got shortlisted this year. But yeah, man, it, if you have not seen Soul, or Mr. Soul is the name of the documentary. It's um, which is kind of weird because of how it's seen. Like it's not in its um, directed, uh, it's not being distributed like, you know, by Netflix or anything yet, but it will be. But yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal documentary. All right, so let's, let's talk about, uh, let's, look, let's back up for a second from there, because that's an Oscar. Um, the two Grammys. Mm -hmm. The two Grammy nominations. What, were, what, 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 what two songs were they? Well, it wasn't for the songs. It was for the albums for um, for Black Radio Two, and mm -hmm. also for the F Your Feelings album. Okay. Rob Glasper. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it was best R and B album. How'd you How'd you feel when you got the call? I didn't. I, I basically found out on uh, found out when when on Facebook. Really? Like, people were like, "Yo, congratulations!" I'm like, "For what?" And like nomination. Now, I, now that was for the Grammy. Now with the Oscar shortlist, and I did get the call okay. from Rob. And if, can I be honest with you? Of course you can. That's what we do. What we do is honest. I hate when people say that. Like, nah, you've been lying this whole time. <laughs> uh, what's, what's life been, man? I can't trust you. Uh, no, man. Um, I didn't care. If I didn't care. Really? I didn't care. No, I didn't. Because for me, I, I had gotten real jaded with the industry. You have to think, I left, I, 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 I ran away from Broadway and Hollywood and, and the music industry because of how I was done. Right. And right. writing for Rob was the thing where it allowed me to be covert. I could, I was writing from afar. I was never the face out front. I was, I was doing that work and I was cool with it. I was working on cruise ships. And when I came back from COVID, I got involved into you know, trading with the stock markets and different things and that life was going on, you know, right. COVID and all of this other stuff. I didn't care about no Oscars and no Grammys. And, and to be honest, if I must be real with you, when I found out who we were up against, 
I felt like, well, it was great that we got recognized. Right. But I knew that I was like, politics don't kick in. I was like, ain't no way, like Aretha Franklin would say, that right. we going to. But it, it was cool to be recognized. But I just, it was a weird feeling. I, I couldn't celebrate it. I couldn't celebrate it really truthfully in my spirit because I just, I, I felt like I just didn't care about that stuff. Okay. It wasn't until later on that other people were making a big deal out of it that I was like, okay, well, maybe this is cool. But okay. nah, it, it, it didn't hit me like that, you know? Right, 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 right. Um, it, 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 I, I guess, uh, you know, you putting your heart and soul into it, especially, you know, because it hurt me when you said it. You know, you, you, you got to a point where, yes, dad, I'm about to live this dream and you're about to see it. Mm-hmm. And that be snatched out from under you, you know, after, you know, you put on all your work and all that. I, I, I feel you, fam. I, I feel for you. I absolutely feel for you. you know? I feel for you. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> yes, man. Yeah, yeah, man. man. Prince, man, a genius. I mean, people Absolute don't get genius. that. Absolute genius. Yeah. I, I, it, it hurt me. But um, when that whole situation happens, I, I still get hurt in my heart when I think about how everything like that happened, because that was something that was that we had always talked about and dreamed about. And to have someone who I admired and who I looked up to literally throw me to the dogs. Right. It, I mean, it wasn't until later on that I found out why. And, and it's still, I don't be grudging for that. It's like, yo, it's business, it's what it is. He was just doing what he had to do because yeah. that's the business. Yeah. But I just, I, I really, it, it really hurt me. But I, I'm over it. I got over it a long time ago. Good, good, good. And, and, and I'm glad you said that because I think people need to understand that it's called the music business for a reason. Yes, sir. Right? And, and we, get, we get caught up in, in our feelings and, you know, we, we are all gifted and talented. God has given us talent. But sometimes, you know, the business overrides that talent. And, you know, um, the decisions that are made and the crap that's put out, we're going, how did you, t-? like, for real? Like, you gave, you gave, you gave up my dream for that? Like, yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you, yeah. didn't, you know, so, but, you know, um, but like you said, every, like we said earlier, like before we, before we came on, everything works for good. You know what I mean? P- things happen, like right now, like to be nominated for an Oscar, like, do you think that would have happened if you was on tour? Like, you know, if you was, no, no. And, and and the thing is, is that for me, I, I really felt because of what happened with Atlantic, because I still took that album and I pushed it on my own and I toured over in, in, in England with it. We ended up at the top of the UK soul charts with my song Mine Tonight that had Robin Thicke on the background vocals, ironically. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, but it was it was a cool deal. But I just I really lost. No, no, so, 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 one second. So you had the white version of you singing background? I did have the white version of me. <laughs> ain't even white. You want me to be the, uh, the black Robin Dick? He ain't even the white me. Like, what are you talking about, man? But uh, yeah, he was singing background vocals. I think they wanted me to give him my song. And I just was like, no, I'm not doing it. But uh, no, I mean, he's really, really cool. And and for me, hmm, it, it, it was, it was, it, it really opened me up to songwriting. Because then I started to fall in love with hearing and seeing other people sing my words. Okay. And I started to fall in love with, you know, mailbox money and, and you know, being able to be known and not known. Right. You know? right. So, yeah, it, it was one of the best things that happened to me because then I was like, well, one of the, the only ways I've gotten this industry to make it now is to focus on my song, right? And right. Sure enough, that opened up some doors. So yeah, man, it, it worked out, but it, it was just a, a hurting feeling that I couldn't share that with yeah. my father. All of the stuff that happened to me in my career happened after my father passed. Wow. You know? and, and you know, here's the funny thing, and, and you'll think this is all facts. Before the, my father had passed, the last time that I'd seen him, I was in the hospital, and you have to understand, when someone has renal failure, um, there he had sepsis as well. I mean, you're septic. Wow. Right. It causes you to talk out of your mind because yeah. your, your body's poisoning itself. But one time he had actually come out of that and he was talking like himself. And he was sitting up on the edge of the bed and he was like, I missed my shot. And I was like, you missed your shot? What do you mean? He was like, I missed my shot to get out of here. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? People are going to, they're going to fix you up. They're going to get you right and everything. 
and you're gonna get a second chance. And he was like, no, it's not a second chance for me. He's like, it's a second chance for somebody else. Wow. And he never told me anything more than that. And I said, well, you know, me and you have always been real with each other about that. So I quoted one of his favorite movies. I said, so you can get busy living or you can get busy dying, but either way, I'm with you. Right. He took a breath and he said, okay. And he fought the best he could, but he didn't last much longer than that. And I knew what he meant by that. And yeah, after he passed away, it's like a whole lot of everything happened after that. And that right. and that still hurts me to this day. Yeah, no, it's, it's especially, yeah, 2012, you know, it's it stays fresh. It stays fresh. Yeah, it never, um, it never leaves you. Yeah, no, no, un, un, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately. But, but, unfortunately but, and fortunately. And I was about to say that you are blessed with a lot of amazing memories from your dad and you're yes, close, sir. you know what I mean? Yes, and if you really, like, let's really step back for a second. There's a lot of black men that can't say that. Yeah, my, my son in, included. Because yeah. I just I just connected with my son two years ago. Wow. How old is he? Yeah, he's 22. Wow. Yeah, wow. he's 22. I, I just met him two years ago because the quote Pimp C, this is not my words, this is Pimp C's words. Wicked women using children to live on. Wow. Someone, when someone... I don't think people realize who, who they hurt the most when they do that. They don't. And they have no it's, idea. It's the kids. And yeah. uh, to have finally connected with him, it feels like a missing puzzle piece. But man, is it, is it, is it difficult and, and different, you know? Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I, you're absolutely right. My, I, is, I'm blessed that I had that opportunity right. to have been raised, excuse me, by such an amazing person. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I'll be praying for you, bro. That you know, you and your son become become as dynamic as you and your father, man. Because because I would be. Awesome. I pray yeah. God. I'm working on it, man. We're working on it, man. And, I, and, that's, all, and that's all you can do. You can give it your all, and and he'll. And, 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 you know how the kids are. They see you real. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna. You know, at at some point, you know, even if you know, unfortunately, if you if you pass, he's gonna be like, you know, that dude really put it put put in the work for me. You know, yeah. what I mean? he put in the work for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, biggest success story not based around money. Hmm. Biggest success story not based around money. Yeah. Hmm. Biggest success story not based around money. You know what? Um, I never base any of my success stories uh, uh, around money, so that's kind of a, a loaded question. Um, can you rephrase? I'm gonna rephrase it. it, it um, big success story, not uh, around money. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest success story not based around money. You know what? Um, I'd have to say, I'd have to say me living to be 40. Nice. So for all of my life, I've, I've, I've tried to commit suicide four times. What? You know, yeah, yeah. I ended up in the hospital um, all four of those times. I was in the psych ward twice. Wow. Because of over because of overdoses. Um, I I've had a lot of bouts with depression all of my life, and I know that it's hereditary because my mother said to my father, "You know, maybe I'm just like my, my mother. Right. Maybe I'm just like my father too, bro. Like I was, I was. She yeah. says I'm just like him with that, and." To have been able to have made it this far and and to have just been able to to touch that 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 place where because well you have to understand where I'm from, nobody really does any of the stuff that I've done. Right. Hey Mary Parish, no, that, that don't happen from right. here. That, that doesn't exist here. And the fact that I was even able to do any of that and no representation, no agent, no, I've never had an agent, never had a manager. Okay. Like, Nothing. I've, I've I've only gone on open calls and gotten the part or submitted material because I believe that I was that person. I met Rob Glasser in, in a bar and and kept bugging him every time he came by the bar because he was on the jam session. Say, yo, I need to write for you. And God made it happen. I mean, all of those I look at as my greatest successes. But just the fact that that God has always opened the door and I didn't need anyone else but me. I didn't need anyone else but God and myself, and God right. just made it happen. Okay, you know, it was never based around money. It was just the fact that I was able to get there and do it. Nice. You know, 
because none of those jobs really paid like talking about no not, no until unless you have a hit song you ain't getting yeah. anything money like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah i can feel that um so that's 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 pretty tight though um you know uh we 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 unfortunately we we live in a in a world that bases everything on the accumulation of wealth and material you know and for you to you know kind of wobble on the question for a little bit so that's why i had to have you you know stand on it and really come up with the answer you know the answer was I, i've had i've had this amazing life like i would have like if we had stopped this interview and we would talk you know a couple of, couple of weeks from now and you would told me tona i tried to commit suicide four times i would have never believed you because your energy was so high when we, we, we got on, when we talked, you know, you're a lively dude, like you, you're real, you're a real cat. I can see it. So I would have mm-hmm. never, I would have never figured, you know, you you would went through that. If you just said during the period when the label dropped you, you know what I mean? You you kind of spiraled and felt that you needed to go that way. Dad dying, mm-hmm. felt that you need to go that way. Uh, okay, I can understand that. But to say that you've been, this is something you've been battling with for your life. You know what I mean? And even as even as recent, I'm gonna cut you off. Uh, even as recent as this past November, I was sitting out in, in the car in in front of, of my mother's house when I when I pulled in, and I literally I, I drive around in Louisiana, this open carry state, and I drive around. I used to with my gun on the, on the front seat because they have some folks, crazy people down here, right, and. Right. I literally was sitting in the front yard. This is just me being transparent. I was sitting in the front yard and I had my gun cocked and loaded, ready to go on myself because I felt like such a failure after last year. Right. Because when I lost my job from the cruise lines and I had money saved in the stock market, but I was trying to invest it, but then things were tough down here and I took money out in order to take care of business. And I was like, well, I can learn to trade in order to get that money back. What did I do that for? That 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 completely just decimated what I had, and it made. And it's funny you said that. We live in a society that bases so much of your valuation around your high score, as I like to call it, yeah. your accumulation of money. And when you lose constantly, and when you make all the wrong decisions when you're trying to do right, nothing hurts worse than that. I mean, yeah, you, you feel, feel like a failure. It's like on the raising of the sun. One of my favorite plays of all time. When you saw Sidney Poitier right. play that part, he's like, Guilty. what about the money? Like, like, like really? Like, yo, he was like on the ground, like, yo, because right. that was my daddy's money. Right. That was his blood. Right. That was his right. sweat. And his mama right. came and she's like, you threw it all away. And he's like, he right. wasn't trying to throw it away. He was right. trying to do something right for right. the family. And that's right. how I felt. was like, I didn't throw it all away. I, I was doing right by my family. And I, and while I was doing that, I was trying this in order to, to make up the difference. And, and I, I just knew that I could, and it didn't happen. And I just felt like, because my high score was in the minus and because my plan got broken and because I don't have a job now because the cruise lines are closed and the entertainment industry period was closed. And here I am back at the bottom, my savings gone, the work I put in gone. I was ready to go. I felt like I'm not worth anything. Don't nobody, don't nobody need me here. It wasn't until, honest to God, it wasn't until I discovered TikTok that okay. life changed because I, I, I'm, I'm motivational to speak there. I'm the, I'm the hey baby guy. Okay. And I come on every day and I give a one minute clip where I'm basically speaking life into now 90,000 um, mostly women. And uh, I go live and then, and I speak life and I speak love and that community has, has really, they, they saved my life. I say it all the time, TikTok saved my life. Man. Well, yeah, okay, we'll, 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 we'll say TikTok did it, but, but you have a- well, you, we, well, we know God saved my life. Yeah, yeah, but, but cause I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to preach to you for a second. Cause you, oh, have, really? a, you, you, have, a, you have a different, uh, I'm gonna say anointing through your voice and through your words and through your your, your your thing your mother gave you faith and resilience and God is whispering in your ear, come home, boy, come home. So you take that the way you need to take it, son. You take that the way you need to take it. Yeah. You are the one that my heart seems for. Whatever you do. Not even 
Although there are many in my house, it's still empty with my prodigal son. Yes, come on, man. Sing that song. That is that song right there. That Dude. is that song. Can I tell you something? Yeah, you can. This interview is a blessing to me, and I'll tell you why. God makes no mistakes. I literally Zero. was sitting on my bed earlier, and I was talking with a friend of mine, and I just felt like, because I got pounded in the markets today, you know, because I, I saw the move on the Dow. I knew it was going in that direction, but I, could, I couldn't stay in the trade because my bank account was too low, and it, it makes you nervous when you real trade. And I just right. felt like such a failure. I was like, I feel like I can't get right in, in life. And she literally was like, you know, your life, your value, your work is not based around the numbers that come from a system that was not meant to serve us in the first place. Like we were the original stock in the stock market. You right. would have been traded. Right. Like, how can you base your valuation off of that? But unfortunately, post COVID new normal, that's all anybody talks about. Right. And, and unfortunately, I just was really feeling like, like, what am I doing? What do, who am I? And the fact that this interview is even going on and I'm even talking about any of this stuff, it's just reminding me about how blessed I am. How mighty your God is. And, 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 and we just need to three-way your sister later because uh, she's <laughs> like, because doing, doing my interview with her, she's like, you need to talk to my brother. You, you and my brother would have so much to talk about. And I was like, okay, all right, just you know, hook us up. You know what I mean? And we we talk, we chat every once in a while, DM here, DM there. But I had no idea, son. You 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 are a real dude, man. Thanks, real man. Dude. You too, brother. I, 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 really, sit talk, I can sit and talk with you all day, man. Yeah, I will. I will. I, you 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 can bet your last dollar that you will be solidly in my in my altar prayers. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one, brother. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Bet your bottom dollar. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. I, I need it, man. I really do. Because anybody who's watching, I'm going to tell you something. It, it's, it's, it is tough to be out here and to feel like you're by yourself. You know, but like George S. Classen says, no man is an island. And I, I, I respect you and I really appreciate you for what it is that you're doing and what it is that you do. And the fact that you would even want to do this for me is, is an honor of mine. But it's, it's, to know that someone actually sees what you do and says, yo, man, you should be proud of that. When I, when I think about anything with my achievements, I've never thought of any of it to be proud of. Right. I've never, I've never celebrated any of it because I'm always like, I'm not on TV. I'm not rich. I'm not some superstar that anybody cares about. So that ain't nothing to celebrate. The fact that you even did this, it, it, that's that's prayer enough, man. I, I, I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Yeah, you know, bro, but but I, I got to tell you, B, the, the only reason I'm doing this is because I told you I was laying in bed and, and, and I got that call at night. It was like, you're waiting for perfection. Perfection's not coming. You got to just mm. go do it. I gave mm. you something to do. Go do it. Mm. You got people to talk to. Go talk to them. You know what I mean? Mm. So th this, this, this is all divinely crafted so we can have this moment. Like, because he knew this moment was coming. So he could talk to your ear and say, yo, I need you to talk to him for me. Tell him he ain't by himself. Tell him I got him. Can I share something with you else? You can. So while this is going on, and the guy I called while ever I was, I got to call him back when we're done. I ended up meeting somebody down here in Patterson when I put my, my grandmother's hot water heater went out. And um, I had to go get another one. A brother that I met at the lumber yard. And um, when we got to talking, just because of the coat I was wearing, Come to find out, he has a state-of-the-art studio, yeah. audio and video film. I bought. They, they completely upgraded it, mainly for me, to work out of and do all of this work out of. Top of the line, everything. I have my. I, I engineer everything. If I don't have to engineer everything, they put state-of-the-art everything in there. It's like, look, nobody else works out of here. But what you do and your and your credits and what it is, yo, I want to. I want to help you in any way that I can. Wow. And someone told me, someone said, if it's your calling, it'll keep calling. You. I, 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 I left the industry and I was I was getting to the point songwriting wise because of different things politically. I'm like, man, I don't want to do this no more. And now the markets are whooping up on me. And now this door opened. And I told my friend earlier, I feel like God is kicking me out the markets and driving me back to the studio. 
And now with this interview and us talking and all of what I'm thinking and just, and I, and I quit smoking not long ago so that my voice nice. could be more pristine. It's getting nice. it's almost 100%. So I know God is moving me. I'm talking and I'm and like Beyonce said in that interview, I know when I'm when God's there because I feel warm, I feel hot. Yes. That's how I've been feeling this whole time having this conversation. Nice. And it's not hot down here. So <laughs> I know that that's God. And I know that if I just surrender to it and I do this work, Yep. that God will open that door, you yep. know? Yep. So, man, this this interview has been a blessing, man. Yeah, man, he, he's got you, yo. He's got you. He's, he, he, know, he knew you from before you came out. You came so, out on music, you know what I mean? You, you, that, that's that's what he's giving you. And and what's so beautiful, and we didn't even touch on it, you're you're an actor, you're a director. You, you, you're a jack of all trades, you know what I mean? So, and you've already said it. You're and and I don't I'm not comparing you to Jesus at all, but what you're saying is you're coming out of Nazareth, as far as your city's concerned, right? Yes, and people like you don't come out of there. You know no, what good thing no, no. comes out of what good thing comes out of blah 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 me, yeah. <laughs> me, you know yeah. what I mean? Me. I never thought that though. I never thought that. That's I, why we I, have I, this I, conversation, I, sir. Yeah. I always thought me being from here, I always thought that me coming back here was a, sim was a sign of my failure. Well, there's a book um, that uh, talks about a lot of things, and I, it's called The Alchemist. And the, in The Alchemist, the guy goes one of my on, favorites, man. Right. It's one of my favorite books as well. Um, uh -huh. It got pros and cons for it, but the pro is he goes out looking for his treasure when his treasure was always at home. Mm hmm. Mm, I forgot. All about, I gotta reread that book. Man. Come on, man. Have you, read, have, you, have you read Three Magic Words? Uh, no. Who's 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 that? Umit S. Anderson. I I'll, I'll text you my phone number so you can text it back to me because we're gonna stay in contact. You know, you're, you're now my little brother. So and, and people who are listening that hears that they know you locked in now. You got a problem. <laughs> we're gonna be DMing, DMing you tell you oh, you better run. <laughs> no, no, man, trust me, I, I love it, man. You know, that's one of Nipsey Hussle's books on his reading list. I need to send you uh, his reading list. That book, okay. that book changed my life when I when I connected to the truth of it. But I, I forgot, I lost the truth of it because I've lost the truth of myself. I really have. Come on, all right. Read that book. Okay. I'm gonna text it to you. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's that thing that, that we get caught in this 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 world of of glitz and glamour and two second shots of scrolling and oh the, he's on a yacht and they're doing this and they're singing and they, you know what I mean and, and we yeah. get we start we start doing that that poisonous thing comparing you know what I mean guys that like girl is I gave you a calling right and what's really dope is. Um, Another new little brother of mine, uh, Juan um, uh, uh, John, amazing young man. So I'm gonna tell you real quick because you also said that you wanted to talk about me as we talk about you. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. share something with you. One of my really good friends was going through something mm -hmm. and John and I had a, had a call, but I'm not hanging up for my man because he's going through something. So he explained mm -hmm. it to me and I put him on hold. I said, yo, John, I need to take care of this. Put John on hold so we blah, 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 blah. And I'm pouring out to him. Right, I'm pouring into him. Before we go off, I pray for him. Right mm -hmm. now, I've got a list of things that I'm going through myself. Like, like I told, like I told John, I'm not holding. I'm not Atlas holding the world. I'm Atlas holding the galaxy. Oof. Right. Um, so I'm pouring into him, and I'm not going to share with him the pain I'm going through because it's his moment. Mm -hmm. So me and John get to talking. And I saw sharing with John that we only know each other through this group that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's like, yo, it's been on my spirit to call you. And I'm like, yo, it's been on my spirit to call you too. And he's like, and I told him some things. He's like, listen, stop, pray for you. In that moment, he doesn't know how much he shifted everything from me. Every word that came out of his mouth was something powerful for him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm just sharing with you, God puts us in places that people, as long as we're pouring into something, as he told us to do, he'll keep keep pouring into us, man. He'll keep pouring into us, baby. 
So wow. you you are you are good money. You are good money. Yeah. So go ahead. Pray, for, pray for me. Huh? Pray for me. Right now? Right now. Well, let's let's go. A whole day. Let's go. Heavenly Father, you uh you understand what we're doing right now. You you ordained this conversation before it was necessary to be ordained. You ordained this conversation, Lord, when you told me to get off myself and go ahead and put this thing together and not worry about what it looks like because you have a calling for me to do, Lord God. Lord God, this young man has gone through many things, more things than he's ever revealed to anybody in this moment and in this time. He understands right now, Lord, that you are speaking directly to his heart, his mind, and his soul, Lord God. He The devil is trying to take him out of here four times has put a depression on him lord god i commanded right now in your precious name in jesus name that those things are poured, poured, poured down those things are torn down right now lord that he will give his life completely to you and you will move through him in a way that has never happened before and he will build an empire to your name in the city that he lives in right now lord god that he'll be a blessing to everybody that he touches and him and his son will become a bond stronger than anything that has ever been seen before and his family. Lord God, I bless his family right now. I bless his bloodline, Lord, for, yeah. for going forward, Lord. They will pass the mantle down and serving your name, Lord God. Continue to bless them. Continue to tighten up his, his gift, Lord God, that can show the world who you are and how strong you are. Because his mother gave him the calling, faith and resilience. And right now you are being faithful and he's going to be resilient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, baby. Yes, brother. Amen. Yes, brother. Yes. Yes, brother. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, no. All day, fam. Thank you, man. Hey, we do that all day, fam. All day. Yes. Yes, boy. Yes, man. Yes. Yeah, man. All day. All day. Oh, man. Sure. Yes, man. Give him the glory, yo. Give him the glory. Oh, yes, man. man. Woo. Uh, Yes, man. Yes. Oh. What a good guy. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. What a good guy, yo. Thank you. Man. So I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even need to go back to the question of what you know. Uh, what, was the, what was the turnaround? We already know what the turnaround is. The yeah. turnaround is we know what it is. We, we still yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. know what it is. Yes. You had a will be great. Hmm. Yes. Israel, you can get you gotta mention him. Turn around, open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing overflow. Turn it around, open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing we cannot contain. Let it rain. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's how I feel. Man, man, listen, man, listen. So, um, I'm gonna ask you this question. I'm gonna go back to this other question. Uh, mm -hmm. before I close out with the last question. COVID shot? No. <laughs> no, sir. No. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that black market passport. <laughs> I'm going to get you the <laughs> Come on, sign the treaty, baby. Come on, man. I know <laughs> so um, why? Why not? Because I don't trust the United States government, and I am not an experiment. OK. That's why. Um, since, since, since the great bloodshed have colonized America, Africa, and every other place that they've set foot, our people have been um, Biolog and we've been under the duress of biological warfare mm -hmm. of all kinds of ways, whether it's been from the food that we eat, the smallpox blankets they use to kill off our people or try to kill off our people, Tuskegee being only one experiment. Um, I don't mean to get political, but I see a lot of agendas at play. This is not something that, that you, excuse me, did not see coming. Right. Um, and for me, my God is all the healing that I need. And we've been at the mercy of viruses for how long? Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you care so much about the black community. Now you care so much about our plight. Now you wanna push us to the front of the line and give what that one idiot said was this is medical reparations for black people. Who said okay. that? 
some 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 idiot and and some idiot reporter and i'm like look if there's one thing that i know if there's one thing that i know is that when if it comes down to something serious that's really truly life-threatening the great bloodshed would never push us to the front of the line okay they're going to make sure that they are the first in order to be getting take care of and i do know that for me um i'm not going to be forced into something and if you notice um it's all about control you can't come here unless you do this you can't go there unless you do that you can't travel here unless you do this you have to do this for the good of the people um and with all due respect um the, you never give you never cared about us as a people and at the end of the day my body my choice right you know if uh, if it's about you being protected you take the vaccine right and, and you can if, if it's that effective you can can protect yourself oh they got a whole bunch of, they got a few people that they got problems there's no problem these are people's lives right and at the end of the day if you would have done what you should have done we would not be in this situation right. but then again i dare say that when you engineer um, the pandemic, then you're going to make sure that it gets to this point. That it's so it's so obvious. The agendas are so obvious. It's sickening. And the fact that they would think that we're idiotic and docile enough not to see it and call a spade a spade is insulting. Okay. You know. And then they want to ask, well, why why don't you trust the United States government? You would say that because you have not been at the mercy of this government the way that our people have. Yeah. Right. It'd be different right. if we had a track record of actually caring about us. No problem. Absolutely. I'll do my part because, hey, we've always done right by each other. But are we or are we not being gunned down in the streets because since we classify ourselves as civility mortis, a.k.a. Black, we're dead in the eyes of the law. Have yeah. you or have you not terrorized y'all's neighborhood when it comes down to not only the foods that we eat, the police that police us, but also because of your biological warfare. At the end of the day, I know that your history and your track record does not speak to the benefit of my people. So with all due respect, I will trust my God and I'm gonna go at it the way that I was meant to, by myself, with myself, as myself. Wow, okay. I, 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 I dare not say that was a mouthful, but it was. <laughs> it was. It was, and I apologize for that, but I'm very passionate about it. Listen, truth. man, listen, man. I, I told you before, we, we speak truth here. That's your truth, and I'm not going to take that away from you. You know what I mean? That That's your truth, and, and that's how you feel. And it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we have such a mistrust to the place that we have blood, sweat, and tears for. You know what I mean? Like, we, it's, it's not like, if, if you were to look at patriotism, Black people should be at the top of the list of patriotism because we have gone through so much, but yet we still stand for you. You know what I mean? Yet we still we still rise every morning to to do our jobs and to do what we need to do. Like like we talked about before before the the, the whole interview started. Um, all we're look, looking to do is get what you got and be left alone uh, to be able to go to work and, and fight for the same dollar. We're not actually to give us anything. Just get out get out of our way. Come on. Let us, let us be preach, the God, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all we're talking about. We're not we're not we're not saying hey, give us handouts. We're not asking for that. We ask we're asking for when I go to the bank and, and, and my my credit lines up with Johnson's credit, we both get the three percent. Don't give mm -hmm. no red light in my community. Don't 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 do any of those things. Make it yes. a fair playing field. We're not we're not looking for um um I think it's opportunity of outcome. We want we just want opportunity. We'll rock yeah. out. Just give us opportunity. Because we've proven to you in the last 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. After all these things are supposed to be taken away, we gave you a president in 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We gave you a president in 50 years. So mm -hmm. don't think that we're not capable. We're more than capable. Just get out the way. Don't hold us back. Just That's all we ask for. That's all yeah. we ask for. Yeah. 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 You have to think about it. We have had to march for civil rights. Right. right. Just for you to act civilly, to act civilized. We taught right. you how to be civilized. Africa and Egypt is the cradle of civilization. Rome did not want to be like and want to destroy Egypt for no reason because we taught you how to be civilized. Let's keep in mind, we bought sanitation to Europe, the Moors. We bought um, actual cleanliness and teaching people how to take baths to Europe, the Moors. That's a historical fact. That's not propaganda. That's historical it's not fact. propaganda. Yeah. And, and, and at the end of the day, the wars in Spain, it tells you all about it. Come on. But here's the problem. 
And, and people who don't know their history, they get on my nerves with this. It's like, look, the Dred Scott decision, the Dred Scott case, it was, a, the Supreme Court said that, look, the constitution was not written for black people in mind. So all of these rights that you say that you're entitled to, you're not entitled to. And people wanna talk about the 14th amendment doing this, that, and the other. Well, if that's the case, why is the original parchment still, parchment still considered ironclad? And if that were the case, why are we still being gunned down in the streets and have to celebrate one victory, one victory against the corrupt cop, which was a small one at that. Why do we have to celebrate like Christ just came back? Because right. we have been we have been dying for you to act civilized. civilized. That's the problem. We and, and the problem is that we are having to we we are marching for the approval and for the the we're marching for the approval of the oppressor to act civilized. And, and, and I dare say, it's like what my Malcolm X said. He was like, you know, um, how do you, you know, get your, your liberty from your oppressor? And he's like, well, you don't get your liberty from your oppressor. You don't get your freedom from your oppressor. You take it. Right. And, and the problem is, is that we have always, we have always played by the rules. And, and, and they're not even our rules. It's not even our game. And, and, and the problem is, is uh, for us, if really truthfully, and this is what Farrakhan said, he was like, the, the, the America is afraid, and I'm paraphrasing, he's like, America is afraid that we will do to her what she has done to us and what by all rights we are entitled to. Like if we responded in commensurate measure to how we have been treated, this would be an entirely different situation. But we have still acted peacefully. How can a people who have been so terrorized, so done so wrong for so long, for 400 plus years, be expected to act civilly under these conditions. I personally believe that that has been our only problem because I dare say there is, there is no repercussions. There's no repercussions for taking our life. There's, there has been none. The slave patrollers as the origin of the police is, that's facts, they have had qualified immunity, meaning because of my qualifications, I am immune to whatever. Ladies out there in the office, that's like your boss sexually harassing you. And him saying that because of my qualifications, I am immune to anything. That's like Harvey Weinstein being immune to any blowback. Well, oh, uh, mm -hmm. I said, well, uh, we did have a uh, number 45 said because I was the owner of the pageant, I could walk through the halls of the women getting dressed. And because I'm a celebrity, I can grab them by the private parts without asking. But we're going to move on from now because I don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 my name is Muhammad, man. Come on. You get, no, no you get I'm not. I'm not. It's, it's just that we'll talk. You know, we'll, 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 we'll really go to some deep stuff. You know what I mean? We'll talk. But um, I don't want to give that, especially with the, you know, the death of the 16-year-old girl right now, um, behind mm -hmm. behind the victory, you know, I, I, it's 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 taxing, right? And we just had a breakthrough victory moment for you, and I don't want you to let the devil, you know, kind of sliver his way back in, you know, what I mean, with 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 with, uh, with the victory that we had tonight over your life, you know, what I mean. So I, you, I hate you, you brother. You need to stand strong, and, and, and what you need to stand strong in, God is being God, you know what I mean? What they yeah. have to understand is we were all made in the image of the Imago Day, and once they realize that, right, mm -hmm. every time they do something to one of us, it's biblical. They're doing something to him. He mm -hmm. told Cain, people, people miss it. He told Cain, because of your jealousy, don't let that thing take a hold on you because it wants to own you. He told mm -hmm. Cain, take control of yourself or you're going to do something bad. And Cain did not listen. People missed that part. Mm. God has always gave a warning before he put down the judgment. Mm. And in his judgment, he still gave Cain grace. And you know what's crazy? Black folks don't even know that we're able. No idea. They don't even know that we're able. Think about what we do. We're able. Uh, what do we uh, do? Again, we do because again, what? We're able. Again, we worked out in the field. <laughs> have we not been out in the able was in the field? Have we not been working out in the fields all of our lives? A a able, able was the farmer. Abel gave a Abel gave the firstling of his of his cattle. He gave the firstling of his listen, man. I could we could really break this thing apart, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> we could really uh, go in. That's a conversation for another time, man. Yeah, we can go, go in, on. man. I, this, this, that Bible thing. 
I, I do it for real, but I, I don't I don't play with it. I do it for real. Yeah. I go for, from from his cultural relevance for the time that it was it was written and, and why it was written and the the, the from the Hebrew aspect. It, it's it's not just a West. So a lot of people get it messed up. The Bible is an Eastern foundation. It's not Ethiopia. Western. Ethiopia, sir. It's 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 all of uh, Africa. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's Africa and and what people don't understand is before. The, they came down and, and changed things like what we call the Middle East, which used to be called the Near East. Mm. And the African continent reached up to, uh, to Israel. So they, there's a lot you don't understand. I mean, yeah. people don't understand yeah. this thing. You know what I mean? I so when we start really talking about biblical discussions and white man's religion and this religion, I always say to people when they say that, how can it be a white man's religion when one of the rivers ran through Ethiopia? How? Can't be. It was all through the Near East. The mm -hmm. foundation of the book is Middle Eastern. Where do you talk? You have no idea what you're talking about. Here, the oldest Bible in creation is the Ethiopian Bible. The oldest pictorial Bible is the Ethiopian Bible, absolutely. <laughs> Your popes in the Vatican, they kiss the feet of statues of black Madonnas and, G and baby Jesuses that are black like, as night. Like I said, we can we can go into a lot of stuff in a lot of different ways, but you know what I mean? We're gonna keep this about you right now. <laughs> ah, okay. Hey man, this is, no, 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 this is about me and because it's about us. And it's yeah. important that, you know what? I don't mean to segue, but I'm not segue, but I don't mean to get lost. But having this conversation lets me know why Atlantic Records didn't want me to go by the name Muhammad and wanted me to go by Michael Ayers instead, because you, you can't separate me from the truth that I, I came up. I'll never forget. This is what Andre told me, and this is facts. He sat me down before um, I'd ended up leaving. Well, actually, no, before I got presented that, that day, because he wanted to present me as Michael Ayers. And these were his words exactly. He said, after Ali, he's like, Ali was the last. He said, wow. there'll never be another Muhammad to infiltrate pop culture after Ali. He said, because after 9-11, American white kids are gonna hear your name, Muhammad, and they're gonna think you're coming to bomb their house. So he's like, so Michael Ayers is a better name that we think that you should go by. Wow. And yeah, and, and the thing is, is that I dare say that I understand why, because the, the nation of Islam and the black Muslim movement was so empowering. Muhammad Ali was so empowering to our people. The last thing you want to do in this day and age of denigration and subjugation through the entertainment industry and Tavistock, you don't want to have a brother with that name because automatically you're afraid that, oh, well, he represents that. He right. speaks that. And right. this is spiritual warfare that we're in right now. Well, well absolutely. And the entertainment industry is one of the main ways in which our people are being subjugated and denigrated, but I digress. <laughs> no problem, brother. No problem. So we're gonna close out with this one. This is always the my 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 make you think about yourself question. Mm. If you could go back at any time, mm. at any time in your life, right, as you are right now, and speak to um the younger you at any point in your life and say, something what what year would it be how old would you be and what would you say mm. you know what if i think about it i would go back because this is because truthfully this is something that 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 affected me and rocked me psychologically years ago back when i was in junior high I had ended up shaving all of my hair off just because I wanted to see what I looked like bald headed. And when I did, my father, I don't even know if he knew what he was doing, but he had basically said that I had removed my beauty mark because my hair was my beauty mark. Wow. He basically said I look like, uh, you know, when I shaved my head off, he said, you know what you look like? You look like a D with eyebrows. And okay, okay. Ever, ever since then, when I, when I lost my hair, even before then, I, I just, I never looked at myself the same. I looked at myself as I lost my beauty mark. 
Right. And from there, everything about me that I thought was beautiful, I thought was ugly. Right. If I could go back to, to myself at a younger age right now, I say, dude, don't listen to that. Right. Because my father forgave him. He didn't know what he was doing. I mean, right. Exactly. Was, exactly. And it wasn't for denigration. But it, it, it affected me and made me feel like I wasn't, I wasn't worthy. It made me feel like, well, ain't nobody going to want me when I when, I lost my hair. I felt like that was it. Nobody wants me. Right. Who wants, who wants a bald-headed brother? I mean, who right. wants a deal with ears and eyebrows? You know, I would I would go back and tell myself, look, love yourself. Yeah, love you yourself. Love yeah, love yourself. Your self-love is the yeah. best love. You are magic. You are not defined by how much money you have and how much you don't or who loves you or who doesn't. You love you. God made you. You are you are individually and divinely made. Stand with that and, and, and go forward and don't doubt yourself and love yourself and accept yourself and believe in yourself. Because that, that, that has been my Achilles heel all my life is that I, I feel like I made it in spite of myself. It was just God's grace and mercy that opened the door. I've never gotten anything because I really believed in myself. Okay. And, and I shudder to believe I'm not believe. I shudder to think about how great my life is about to be now that I'm shifting to the point where I'm about to really take a hold and, and I'm and believe in myself now. Yeah, you know? yeah. Just just remember who walked before you. That's yeah. all. You know, I, I like I like to impart this this little thing on you before we click out. When he said, "Let there be," you were in the statement. Hmm. Wow. People, hmm. people really don't understand what it takes to make a child, right? Hmm. It is harder to make a child than get struck by lightning, by the hmm. two people who, who made you. If your father and some other woman got together to have a child and never met your mother, you would never be here. Mm -mm. The odds are, are all, almost un unmeasurable hmm. for you to be here. I never thought about that. That's what I'm telling you. You are divinely wow. crafted by God. Wow. No one else's 23 and 23 could make you. No, mm. no one else's experiences that you went through could make you. Nothing. All the hard times, all the all, all the dirt, all, 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 all the bad decisions. Who you are right now could not happen. That person would not exist. Mm. God has built you for a purpose. Walk in his light, son. Walk in his light. He got you. Yes, sir. All right? I will. I... You are God, son, man. Listen, man, I'll just do, I just do what he tells me to do, B. Because before you talk, and this is real talk, before he, you told me, to, he told, did you ask me to pray for you? He told. He said, "Talk to talk to him about me. I'm straight up, B. Yeah. And 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 I was and I was doing with and, and my my best friend knows. I I shrink in these moments. I'd be like, oh, God, I'm having an interview. I'm gonna talk about you right now. And he made you take take a, take us here. You said, pray yeah. for me. How I, I was gonna run from that? I'm, I, oh, I'm not gonna pray for you on air because we're doing a live interview. <laughs> Never turn down my God. Oh man. You're divinely gifted, man. I'm gonna tell you like this. I'll leave you with. I'll leave you with this, and I'm gonna paraphrase one of my favorite movies um, because this is literally how I felt today. I, I was feeling mighty low. I was feeling mighty bad, but when I see you, I know there was a God. Nice. I know there was a God, and one day I was gonna get to go home and be with my children. Like I feel like I know there's a God because God spoke to you, because I asked God, I was just like, God, what am I supposed to, what do you want me to do? And I had this discussion and this debate with my mother, with a friend of mine, like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? What is this? And then you end up texting saying, yo, 745, here's the questions, we're about to get it. And then we're sitting here having this conversation and it's, wow, man, you just, you, you blessed my life tonight, man. Thank you. The most high blessed your life tonight. I'm just an instrument, son. God bless you, man. I'm just, I'm just following his direction. 
I speak abundance. I speak prosperity. I speak life. I speak light. I speak nothing but God's grace and blessings and peace and mercy upon your life. You, thank you so much for it, listen, man. God listen, bless you. It, it, here's, here's, here's what you can do for me. Do what he told you to do. Honestly and with all your heart, seek him. Talk to him like you talk to me. Talk to him when you're pissed off at him. Why, why am I here? You know, be real with him. Because he, listen, what we don't understand is God already knows. So when you get mad at God and, you know, like, like I don't understand. I did everything. You, what do you want from me next? Those are the times he wants you to fast and pray and put something down. Those are the times he wants you to reach out to your brothers and say, let's get a prayer call going on. Let's, let's walk together. You know what I mean? You're not alone, son. You are not alone. Thank so what, you, what I was about to say, what you can, what you can do for me is to allow all the blessings he's given to you to flourish. So when I see you, I go like, yes. That's, that's a blessing enough for me right there. I don't need nothing else. I tell you what, I'm going to go hard and I'm going to do my best work. And you watch and see what God does, man. Because I know, I know this is, to quote the stock market, market lingo, this is a pivot point. Yes. I know this is a pivot point, and I, and I'm going from being very bearish. I'm, to very I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep hearing gospel album in my ear. I keep hearing uh -huh. gospel. I keep hearing gospel album. I don't know what that is. That's between you and him. But I just keep hearing gospel album. I've heard that before. All right, so I'm myself, just telling you. I thought to myself, no, because I'm like, what the, what the hell is a Muhammad going to do in the gospel realm? Who, who going to want to listen to me name Muhammad in gospel? But then a friend of mine was like, that's exactly it. Who else do you know his name Muhammad saying gospel music? That's exactly it. Because what we get because what we get caught up in is, is is there's a cultural thing that we think God is looking for. Mm. He's not looking for that. God's looking for you and what He gave you. He's not looking for you to change to to do it like uh, 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 um, what's his name T.D. Jakes does it. He's mm. not actually to do it like Mary Mary does it. He's actually mm. doing the way you do it. The name he gave you, do it in your name. Do it in the name he gave you. You can't do it in the, you can't do it under. <laughs> All right, we're gonna end on this. You, they tried to get you to do it under Michael. No, your name is Muhammad. My name is Muhammad. Your name is Muhammad. All right, man. All right. Hey, man. A thousand watts with Tony A. Watts. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen to a thousand watts with Tony A. Watts. Yes, brother. Yes, yeah, brother. Man. It, was, it was an electric. It's funny your last name is Watts because this interview was electric, man. That's I, right. I, God bless I, you, man. I, listen, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly you enjoyed too. it, yo. And, and I look too. forward, you know, to a, a thousand other conversations with you about a thousand other things. Oh man, we're gonna talk. We're gonna get into right. it. Man. I will make you proud as your little brother, yes, man. God yes, bless yes. you. God bless all your viewers. But have a good night, man. Thank you so much, man. You I really enjoyed it. All right. Be Peace well. Later. Absolutely. Later. All right, everybody. So, you know, um, that was a little different than anything I've ever done before. Uh, when the Spirit of God takes over, that's who I, I listen to. That's who I follow. That's who I praise. So listen, this is this is what Triumph is about. Triumph is about touching lives in all types of ways that we can possibly touch lives. It's not about me at all. Um, Triumphant is here to bring the real. I will be talking to everybody across the board. I don't care. Uh, uh, people might say, well, he's a Christian. Why you don't talk to Christian people? Because it's not about that right now. And when God wants me to talk to Christian people, I'll talk to Christian people. I talk to my cousin. He's a bishop. I have a thousand other pastors I'm about to talk to. So that's on the list as well. I, I, need to, I need to reach the people and I need to let the people know that we have work to do as a people. We need to come united as a people so we can move forward and do the things that are necessary for the people. All right. We have generations to build. We have wealth to build. We have things to put together and in place. And we can overcome everything that's ever come before us if we just come together. So, Stone Watts signing off. Thank you for being around. Peace. <laughs>